Now that law would allow police to arrest people suspected of illegally crossing the southern border. To make their respective arguments for and against SB4, this is the far-reaching Texas law. Uh, on hold uh, after the court has formally addressed this aspect of SB4. The Court of Appeals is mulling over arguments heard today on the Texas law that makes entering the state from Mexico a crime. Not through border crossings and would empower judges to direct those people to be taken back to the border. Remind us why the Biden administration is taking issue with this policy and why Texas wants the responsibility. We need to discuss what transpired with the Supreme Court's recent 6-3 ruling, which has profoundly upended a crucial issue in our nation and sparked a fresh border dispute between the state of Texas and the Trump administration. Texas in border law dispute. A few weeks ago, the Supreme Court issued a 6-3 decision in a case called Labrador v. Poe, which placed limitations on lower courts' ability to grant overbroad injunctions. That decision is now being used by the state of Texas to support their right to self-defense. The recent 6-3 decision by the Supreme Court is being utilized to support the state of Texas in their dispute over the Texas border. The state of Texas is currently using that ruling to contest and eventually overturn the universal block that the lower court erected against their SB4 law in cases similar to this one. We need to do some background on this case and the previous Labrador case so you all understand what is happening and what the implications of the Supreme Court's decision are. The Supreme Court's decision in this case is a significant development and the B administration is actively fighting against it. They are desperately trying to prevent the new Supreme Court decision from being used and applied by the First Circuit. Texas's SB4 law effectively makes it illegal for anyone to enter the state at any point other than a lawful point of entry. It also makes it illegal for anyone to re-enter the state after having previously been denied admission or removed from it due to illegal entry. The law would allow Texas law enforcement officers to arrest and detain people suspected of entering the state illegally. Texas's new immigration law, the measure would allow the state to arrest and jail migrants suspected of entering the U.S. illegally. Now that law would allow police to arrest people suspected of illegally crossing the southern border. In Texas passing a strict new immigration bill, it authorizes police officers to arrest migrants. Supreme Court is allowing a controversial immigration enforcement law in Texas to take effect. Lastly, the SB4 law permits judges in the state of Texas to issue orders compelling those who have crossed the border illegally to return to the foreign country where they originally crossed. The bill was challenged by the federal administration in a district court and the court granted a preliminary injunction preventing Texas from enforcing every aspect of SB4. In this case, the lower court issued a global preliminary injunction against SB4 thereby preventing any implementation of the statute. The judges did not give a timetable for when they could rule on whether Senate Bill 4 can take effect. New crimes for simply being present in the United States after having entered through the southern border. To argue that SB 4 is not only unconstitutional, but that it challenges the federal government's longstanding power. SB 4 law and the legal battle. Texas appealed the decision of the injunction to the Fifth Circuit. In response, the Fifth Circuit issued a temporary administrative stay on the lower court's universal order. This meant that originally through an administrative stay, the Fifth Circuit halted the universal block of SB4. Various cases were then consolidated and the plaintiffs filed for Supreme Court emergency intervention. They asked the Supreme Court to step in early and remove the Fifth Circuit administrative stay. They wanted the block of the universal injunction to be removed. The Supreme Court received an order denying the Biden administration's request to vacate the administrative stay. This means the Supreme Court decided in favor of leaving the temporary block in place, at least temporarily, against the universal injunction, siding against the Biden administration. Very curiously and interestingly, in response to that Supreme Court order, the Fifth Circuit issued a new order removing their own administrative stay the same day. Then the day after that, they held a hearing on a state request for a true stay order and issued a two-to-one order denying the state of Texas's request for a new stay. To make their respective arguments for and against SB4, 
this is the far-reaching Texas law. That the court is going to actually, uh, in a more formal sense, address the constitutionality of this matter. They apparently, a lot of intense discussion behind closed doors between the Supreme Court justices. The time you apply a consequence to a violation of law, you see the number of illegal border crossers drop exponentially. Remind us why the Biden administration is taking issue with this policy and why Texas wants the responsibility. What this means is that the Fifth Circuit, on their own, decided to remove the block they had in place on the lower court universal injunction. Just a few days after that, the Fifth Circuit heard oral arguments on whether they would in fact grant a preliminary injunction in favor of the Biden administration. This effectively established the administration's own universal injunction and upheld the lower court's decision regarding the universal block on SB4. However, during the arguments, some judges expressed doubt about whether the U.S. government could actually seek this kind of universal equitable relief against the state of Texas. There was a lot of disagreement during the hearings, particularly from one of the dissenting judges, Judge Oldham who agreed with the state of Texas that the government cannot seek this kind of relief and cannot file this kind of lawsuit. Implications of Supreme Court In the end, specifically, Texas and one of the dissenting judges emphasized that the federal government and these two judges in the Fifth Circuit are now permitting a cause of action that was previously, as stated in a well-known Supreme Court case named Ex Part Young, essentially limited to only private parties and individuals. Judge Oldham and some of the other judges also appeared to be extremely concerned about the extent of relief being granted by the lower court, i.e., that universal injunction that was issued. Just a week after that SB4 hearing in the Fifth Circuit regarding the Texas border dispute and the extent of relief awarded by the lower court, the Supreme Court rendered a landmark decision on an emergency application of the Labrador v. Poe case, which addressed many of the issues raised in the Fifth Circuit. In that case, the Supreme Court ruled that lower courts should refrain from issuing universal preliminary injunctions, which surpass the scope of relief that could solely provide relief to the named plaintiffs in the lawsuits. In his concurring opinion, Judge Gorsuch stated that ordinarily, injunctions like these may go no further than necessary to provide temporary relief to the parties in the case. However, the district court went much further prohibiting a state from enforcing any aspect of its duly enacted law against anyone. In essence, the Supreme Court said that lower courts should return to the principle of granting a more limited scope of relief instead of universal injunctions. Justice Gorsuch and several other judges concurred, stating that the district court's order, to the extent it applies to non-parties, that is, to the extent it provides universal remedy, is a good development. According to the Supreme Court, Universal statewide and probably nationwide preliminary injunction relief is unlawful. The state of Texas is now utilizing that ruling to challenge the universal block on SB4. Well, federal appeal judges this morning heard arguments on the controversial Texas immigration law. Uh, on hold uh, after the court has formally addressed this aspect of SB4. Said that this law may well yeah. have gone too Far. Yeah. And that is certainly what the Biden administration has argued. The law known as SB4, which empowers local law enforcement to arrest and deport undocumented migrants. Texas sent a 28-J letter to the Fifth Circuit, in which it essentially informed them of a recent ruling by the Supreme Court. The Texas letter states that in Labrador, the court issued a pre-enforcement facial injunction of an Idaho law with a majority of the court questioning the appropriateness of non-party statewide proscriptions. The state of Texas filed this letter to the Fifth Circuit after two more justices agreed that the state was likely to succeed in challenging the scope of the injunction. Three justices determined that the state was likely to succeed based on the traditional equity rule, which limits injunctive relief to the actually injured party and notes that any other view would allow judges to govern an entire state from their courtrooms. What's significant about this is that they are addressing some of the concerns voiced by one of the dissenting judges, Judge Oldham. Judge Oldham had previously expressed to all of his colleagues his concerns regarding the decision of the lower court and the actions of the First Circuit in upholding it. Now, of course, the federal government is fighting back against the use of the recent Supreme Court decision. In their response, they state that the U.S. has consistently agreed that courts should not award equitable relief 
beyond what is necessary to provide relief to the plaintiff. However, in this case, the U.S. is the plaintiff, and every implementation of the statute will be detrimental to the U.S. as a whole. The first one is that they believe this measure interferes with federal immigration enforcement. The Supreme Court issued a new order this afternoon to keep a controversial Texas immigration law on hold. The Court of Appeals is mulling over arguments heard today on the Texas law that makes entering the state from Mexico a crime. By the state to help the federal government deal with the unprecedented migration crisis along the U.S.-Mexico border. Unique argument. The district court, therefore, went no further than necessary to provide interim relief to the parties. What the federal government is arguing here is that since the plaintiff is in fact the U.S., they can obtain broad-reaching universal blocks on laws like SB4. They are essentially arguing that the federal government has a special status that allows it to be treated differently and to fall outside the scope of what the Supreme Court articulated in the Labrador case. This is a very important development in this case. It will likely shape the outcome of the Texas border dispute and the lawsuit concerning SB4. This decision clears the way for Texas to immediately begin enforcing this controversial immigration law that passed last year. A federal court is weighing whether a controversial Texas immigration law is constitutional. By the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, just hours after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that Texas officers could enforce this law. Not through border crossings and would empower judges to direct those people to be taken back to the border. And that Texas does not have the authority to essentially deport people back to Mexico and also to arrest migrants for. The issue is becoming even more ripe and interesting for the Supreme Court to review. There is little doubt that whichever side loses the universal injunction argument and the application of Labrador to this case will seek Supreme Court review. They will request Supreme Court intervention to determine whether Labrador was properly applied. Things are getting very interesting in the Texas SB4 case. We are now seeing new Supreme Court precedent being applied in an attempt to remove the universal block on SB4. We will have to wait and see how the Fifth Circuit rules on this issue. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.